had really our, our four questions. And you may notice that we have three panelists. So someone gets to be asked the same question twice. Now, in the spirit of it, this will get passed around by everybody, I have no doubt. But um, just to show that I'm not going to show favoritism and I'm not going to call on my boss next, uh, Kenneth, this next topic covers the execution <laughs> of um, incentive programs and, and how to best do them. So, you know, vendor partners with bases, they'll, they'll vary in size. You'll have tens of partners, you'll have thousands of partners. So how do you how do you put together running a single incentive program and having more than 10 incentives at any one time when you have to really expand that out? Because different partners, different partner types, and different partners in different places in their own journey with those vendors. But how do you put those programs together and, and run those? Yeah, no, that, that's uh, a great question, JD, and probably, um, you know, for, for larger events, well, small and large, it's, it's something that can be a struggle. And this is really and truly where a platform approach comes in, because as we all know, um, incentives play a key role in creating competitive advantage for you as a vendor in the market. And if you want to drive partners to gravitate, you know, towards, towards your solutions over others or over the competition, coming back to the competition, um, I think... You know you have to you have to incentivize if you don't incentivize um it's fundamentally a mistake there is a cost to that but the automation of incentive programs really is now it's a must um and that comes down to the fact there's so many variables at play in today's channel ecosystem it's much more complex than ever before um and i suppose as well have an automation in place or a platform to run your incentives it provides you that ability to track your roi which ultimately you know, your boss or your finance person is going to ask to show me the ROI. It's very difficult to do that on a spreadsheet. Um, and it also, you know, having it not alone being able to track the ROI of the program, but having that ability to see, we talked about it earlier there with Simon was, you know, does it work? Is it working? And if it is working, then you know you're using the dollars in the right place. And if it's not working, no shame for that. Every one of us have uh, run incentives that haven't worked, but move on quickly. And I would say there, you know, in terms of having it automated, you got to make it very easy for partners. You know, the like it's almost like a visual experience for partners and indeed your internal account teams that are managing these incentive programs. You need to make it very easy for the rules of the program to be understood. So if I take something like a rebate for a partner, the more revenue you do, the more money you get back. But it might get more granular than that. It might be for the more revenue you do on my cloud products, I'm going to give you a kicker for those. You might even build thresholds into that to say, well, if you do over 20K or 50K or even a million in the big enterprise, um, I'm going to pay you a kicker of another 1%. And, you know, say something Channel Mechanics does is we show that literally as a speedometer on the screen with gauges so the partner can see on a week-to-week on a -week basis, hey, if I do another 5K, I trip into the next band and I earn more money. So it's really a carrot uh, approach. Um, but, you know, again, there's so many moving parts in the channel. And if you want to ensure the successful execution of an incentive program, I think you have to uh, use use automation. And as the old saying goes, if you, you know, you, you, if you don't, um, you can only manage what you measure, sorry, um, is, is really true in, in the case of incentives. Ultimately, I suppose in terms of partner engagement, that will ultimately determine whether it was a, a success or a failure. And then, you know, that's why making it very easy for partners to access the incentives, make it easy for them to understand them, track how they're doing against the incentives, where are they at at a point in time, um, how they're performing against the goals you set for them. I think all of those things really makes it uh, makes it possible for the incentive to, to be very successful. And again, I touched on this earlier, but when it gets to the point, whether it's a spiff or whether it's points or whether it's cash, when it gets to the time to open up those claim periods, do that very um, smoothly in a very seamless way and make sure you reward uh, the partners for what it is that, that you promised them you would reward. Don't make that difficult. Don't make them have to be raising invoices um, or wait until the AP run at the end of the month to get paid. It really needs to be all done in, in a very simple way in a matter of uh, in a matter of minutes, actually, is, is kind of how we do it. Um, so, you know, they're, they're the kind of things that takes a lot of the complexity out of it for partners um, and makes their life easy and ultimately creates competitive uh, advantage for you in, 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 in your channel. OK, I think, I think that goes back to one of the questions that was first asked. You know, what are the different tools that you would recommend? And now clearly we're biased on that answer. But one of the things that I think is really important because the, the question had the word for the partners in it. So 
we're vendors, right? And, and, and AJ, Simon, you're the vendor. So that that partner portal, which by the way, we have a whole raft of content on our website around partner portals and around MDS. So I encourage anyone listening, curious, go look for that content. But that, that visual reference for that partner to be able to come in, see where they're at, understand what they're doing. The, the partner portals, are very important because that that's going to be one of the primary tools that your partners are actually using. So making sure that when they log in, that their partner experience, we hear a lot about customer experience and now that's sort of transitioning into partner experience becomes a very important piece. So it's, it's really almost beholden on the vendors to make sure that their partner experience is, is solid. Now we are getting short on time and I, I do want to get to our...